I have said not once but many times that I have seen war and that I hate war. I say that again and again. I hope the United States will keep out of this war. I believe that it will. And I give you assurance and reassurance that every effort of your government will be directed toward that end. As long as it remains within my power to prevent, there will be no blackout of peace in the United States. Mr. Jorsic, what do you think about uh, the implications of Mr. Roosevelt's declaration yesterday, or his resolution to declare war? Do you think it, uh, it involves Germany and Italy? I do. In other words, we've got a, a real world war on our hands. I think this is going to be a real. Then what do you think we're fighting for? Well, we are fighting those... Uh, greedy dictators they're, they're, it's for the greedy gain that they're trying to make they're trying to take stuff that don't belong to them who does it belong to? well rightfully just like Czechoslovakia belongs to Czechoslovakia Poland belongs to Poland Holland belongs to Holland but the, uh, Hitler took it over uh, who, does, who, who does Thailand belong to? That's what they're going to fight over in the Dutch East Indies. They right stirred up over that, you see. Well, it surely doesn't belong to Japanese. Well, <laughs> you think it belongs to the United States? I'm just asking you, you know, because after all, we got to have some principles to fight for. Well, I think the United States has got all the principles to fight for. In other words, Japan you think they're hasn't... definitely trying to, dis to preserve the right kind of life. That's right. Land of liberty. You, what do you think about the United States? Do you think it, it is land of liberty? I, believe, I think so. What about I it? I think Mr. it's the best country under the sun. Yeah, what do you think about it, Mr. Russell? Well, I think it is now. I think that's the reason we got to fight, to keep it that way. And do you think by war they'll be able to keep it that way? Yes, because I believe they're going to win the war. Yeah. Even if it costs you a son, you, you're willing to see him go ahead? Yes. Yeah. Well, the country wouldn't be any good uh, if you let them have it. That's right. Well, that's, that takes a whole lot of nerve to say that, especially when you ain't just hypotheticizing. I'd like to go, but they wouldn't have me. Would you go? My age it? would bar me. You'd go, though. I'd go. Uh, laboring men that you know, the union men that you know here in Austin, do you think that's the general opinion amongst them? They would all go there? That well, I believe the majority of them would go. Because mm -hmm. you'll always find men that would rather stay at home than anywhere else. <laughs> Special in a war going on anywhere That's else. right. Uh, well, Mr. Rossick, what do you, how long do you look for this war to last? I think yeah. three or four years. Yeah, it's going to be stretched out all the way around the globe. I, I guess. think so. It'll finish up sometime in 46. How come you just have to here 46? That's my honest opinion. Good last five years, old man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll go then. You think the world can fight that long? Oh, yes. Well, what do you think, what kind of peace do you think we ought to write <clears throat> after the war? I mean, what do you say we win it? 
Well, we're going to win the war. There's no question about that. You know that. The United States is going to win the war. Well, what kind of peace do you think we ought to make with Japan, Italy, Germany? Well, of course, that would be my honest opinion. You know, I'd, I'd think they ought to set up a different uh, form of government over should they give them any power to govern themselves at all? Well, well very little. Mm -hmm. I think they ought to do away with some certain countries and do away with their tongue. Don't let One them speak of them is it. German, huh? One is German. Don't let them speak it anymore. Divide Germany into other little countries there. Give each one of them a slice of it and, and do away with it. What about it, Miss Jurassic? What do you think about it? Well, I think that there shouldn't be any Germany anymore. I think they caused enough trouble. I think when they whip them, they ought to not have Germany anymore. You think that Germany is the cause of all this trouble? Then? I do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, very probable. Well, why do you dislike the Germans? I'd like to know just frankly why you do. If you can think I don't, of a reason, I mean, if you've got any good enough. I don't dislike the German people. I know a lot of German people that I don't dislike, but uh, I remember in the World War was before, the way the thing went, and uh, my children's daddy died from the effects of the World War, and now I've got a boy I got to go, and Germany's caused the whole thing, and I just think that Germany's caused enough trouble that we don't need any Germans. Is that what you, is that the way you feel about it, Mr. Jurassic? Exactly. I think that they ought to do away with that one country. But Japan, maybe, let them go on being... being well, I don't, I don't think they're going to be much to Japan after this war. <laughs> I think they chase them with them then. <laughs> Mr. Calvert, uh, could you tell us, just, uh, and just as nearly as possible, what your immediate mental reaction was upon hearing of the bombing of Pearl Harbor? Well, Mr. Martin, it seemed here in the Middle West that we couldn't quite realize the the uh, greatness of this project that the Grad Japs had started. We uh, all felt that it was just uh, maybe propaganda, newspaper talk. After all, when we uh, heard of the bombing, it was uh, a reaction that we can hardly express. Everyone uh, in this locality and in uh, around the university with as many young people as we have was uh, first depressed and then uh, disgusted and now it seems that we are ready to do anything that is necessary to stop this uh, Japanese invasion. And the shock and the horror of the first uh, hearing of the bombing is now settled into a resolve to actually win the war no matter what we have to do. Is that That's more right. or less express your opinion? That's right. Well, uh, Mr. Calvert, what had been your attitude uh, concerning the foreign policy of the United States toward Japan and toward the rest of the world before this bombing? Uh, I'm quite sure that I was just an isolationist. I you were an isolationist I've before. I've seen that I should feel we keep out of it as much as possible. But after um, an attack on American property, uh, right away, I'm of a different opinion. And uh, do you think that the uh, present uh, Axis powers, and I mean by that Germany and Italy and Japan, do you feel that they must be crushed absolutely before there can be any kind of a just, just peace achieved in this world? Well, I am not sure that they will have to be crushed absolutely. I think that finances, natural resources, will enter into this thing after a length of time. It may be quite a length of time. But you think that we will have to win a war against them? I think we will. Mm -hmm. Next is Mr. Donald E. Bowen, a lawyer. Mr. Bowen, you've heard some of the questions which I have asked Mr. Calvert, and first of all, we would like to know just what your reaction was, uh, immediate reaction upon uh, hearing of the bombing of Pearl Harbor last Sunday. My immediate reaction was that uh, the attack had been framed by representatives of governments wishing to draw us into the war. 
After I learned the true facts, I did have considerable resentment for the more or less treacherous attack of the Japanese, which was uh, not only yellow, but a hit-and-run attack. And uh, I now have the feeling that uh, immediate action should be taken on the part of this government to see that uh, the Japanese are uh, tracked down and uh, immediate action taken and not a too much delay as has existed in the case of England's attitude in the European war. I think that we were right in waiting until we had done everything that was possible in a diplomatic way. Uh, there is a possibility that we waited a few hours too long. I think that in Washington, possibly somebody knew that there was uh, no chance for uh, settlement of our differences, and word could surely have been sent to our outposts, at least, to... Uh, have them on the alert for any action that we might expect from the, from uh, Japan, knowing their history in the past as being a, a rather sneaking with their uh, activities in war. We could have been on the lookout for it. Mr. Bowen, what do you think about that? I uh, feel that uh, the uh, our governmental leaders were sincere in the hope that uh, some peace in the Pacific might be preserved. However, in view of the developments of the last few days, it would seem that at least the military authorities of our country had knowledge of the actual conditions or should have had knowledge of the actual conditions prior to the time of the attack on Pearl Harbor, and we the attack would not have been as disastrous as it would have been if our forces had been as alert as they should have been at that time. They Mr. Fox, uh, tell us, just as uh, nearly as you can, just what you thought of the war when you heard of the declaration of war by Japan, I, I mean the attack of the Japanese planes upon Pearl Harbor last Sunday. I was stunned at first. I didn't believe it. You did not believe it at first. Well, after that uh, period uh, left you, then what did you think about it? Oh, I'd say it was one of feeling of fury and anger that we had been betrayed. That you had been betrayed by the peaceful negotiators in Washington at the time that the uh, actual attack did take place. Yes. I think, uh, I think uh, our uh, Secretary of State must have been asleep if we were betrayed. Certainly, uh, we need somebody in the Naval Intelligence Corps to uh, kind of find out what's going on if we didn't know what was going on prior to the attack. I see Mr. Uh, Royer believes that Boyer. We, Mr. Boyer believes that we were asleep, Miss Fargo. And yet, don't you feel that at the same time that perhaps it wasn't a matter of their being asleep, but rather of holding out to the very end and maintaining an American policy which we have attempted to follow? I agree with Miss Fargo very much. We weren't asleep. After all, the Japanese asked for two extra weeks in negotiations. Believing this to be in the guise of friendship, we did so. They even sent another ambassador, Mr. Caruso, to interview the present, the Secretary of State. And after all, under this guise, I don't think we could say anything but treachery. Do you Mr. think Russell. we could uh, trust the Japanese or any other of the Axis powers since 1939? Isn't it better to trust than to shed the blood of so many millions of people? But do you think that we have not been at war with Japan, Germany, and Italy since 1939? We have had a non-belligerent status. <coughs> non-belligerent in what sense? We have not actually engaged in armed conflict with either of these people. Then you're defining war merely as armed conflict. Yes, I am. And you're will willing to cry treachery and betrayal that the other country gets a jump on us. Well, now, uh, <coughs> since we have some of the attitudes which uh, some of you had at the time of the... Uh, when you heard of the uh, attack by Japan, uh, I'd like to get just what some of your attitudes were concerning our foreign policy before this bombing. In other words, whether or not your attitudes were drastically changed by this bombing. Mr. Fox? Well, I was definitely a cooperationist before this. I don't believe in isolation and never have. Cooperationist? Uh, would you tell us what a cooperation Well, I, I believe that we should work in concert with the other democratic nations of the world. Long I have felt that the difficulty of the United States has been that we, after framing the idea of the League of Nations, dropped out of it. 
since the war broke out in 1939, I have felt that we should give England and later Russia every assistance short of war. Now my feelings are exactly the same. We're, I, we're think, in it. I think Mr. Fox has been reading too many newspapers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That, uh, that is a traditional attitude, the democratic nations of the world, which, which there aren't any democratic nations outside of the United States. Paul, from a, from a student standpoint, I wonder if we don't lean a little bit towards this, especially when we heard the president's speech the other day and heard this unanimous, uh, enthusiastic reaction from our congressman. We've been brought up for the past 19 and 20 years to abhor a war and to treat it as something of, that is not a part of our culture. And then in the past few years, I don't believe we are too surprised at the Japanese action because we've seen what they've done in the past and we've watched them fairly closely. But weren't we a, a little bit used to the idea that we wanted to avoid everything at all costs and then this sudden foreign war policy uh, thrown upon us was rather a shock to this generation because... I, for one, was rather surprised at the congressman the other day cheering so enthusiastically, and yet I think if I were there, I probably would have done the same thing. Yes, the idea, I think, has been instilled into the minds of the youth of this country ever since the World War that, that war is the greatest of all evils. Well, now, after this war is over, we're going to have a problem which is even more important, and that is this, just what part the United States uh, can and will play in the formation of some kind of a post-war world. Mr. Fox. Well, there, boy, Hanks, I believe the entire problem. I think personally that if the United States will take part in the peace treaty, and we will, we shouldn't make the mistakes that we made back at Versailles in 1917-18, and which caused us to remain at war officially with Germany till the 20s. If we are going to set up an international uh, association of nations, then we must be in it. Right. We must give that association Good. some form of teeth so that it will work. Certainly, if Germany is beaten, we cannot kick her when it's down because the same situation will occur at the end of 20 years that has occurred now. A great deal, I feel, of the blame for this war must be laid at the doors of those nations which were victorious in the last World War. And then of we want force as our leading policy so far as we're concerned. I say that we yeah. cannot kick Germany down and keep her down. There's always a possibility that we can keep her down as we did not do after the last World War. We kicked her down, but we let her get back up. Then may I ask one question to those people who are here. Do you believe it's Christian, or do you believe it's even decent or democratic to carry on that sort of a policy toward, an, up, toward a nation? So. I don't think it's good sense. It doesn't seem practicable. I think our fight's with the German government, not with the German people. I agree. Oh, that, uh, yes, but there wouldn't be any German government if the German people didn't sanction it. Hitler can't fight the war by himself. He can't form all the public opinion. Someone has put him there, just the same as all leaders are put there. They have to have a backing, someone behind them. They but can't Mr. go out Hitler. with their bare fists and say, come on, boys, all of you follow me. Well, then again, you've got to look at, at the Germany, which resulted from what we did and what we didn't carry out because Hitler himself is a product of, we might say, of what we as an entire group of nations did then. The German people, oh, when you're ready for something, you there, but you're naturally they're going to vote in someone. Uh, Hitler out on a little uh, space of his own and say he's the cause of all this, that's Well, impossible. no one is doing that, himself. no. You can't, you can't hope when I say to kid to kick Germany and keep her down. What will you do? I mean, you can't wipe out an entire <laughs> people. Even Hitler has tried that and found it extremely unsuccessful. So I think that a just and beneficial peace must come out of this. And furthermore, I believe this peace must be based on a disarmament policy. Well, do you don't think then that it will be wise nor necessary for the United States to police the world, so to speak, after this war is over? Why, no, I think that's going back to the Dark Ages. Mike, no, I disagree with I you. Agree. I, I agree thought you were getting at another point. When I said force, I meant that as an immediate step towards reconstruction, you would of necessity have to use force. Otherwise, you'd have the same thing reoccurring, and that's what we didn't do. If you have an international police force, which apparently the United States is going to supply, then you're simply going to leave the world in one way. Thanks for watching, everybody. This one's a little different than the ones I normally do, but I really enjoyed making it. Please like and subscribe, and maybe I'll make another one like this sometime soon.